Hey guys, Mike here. I've done a nice modification to my 2021 Sea Dew Fish Pro that I think you're going to like. It comes with a six and a half or 6.2 inch little small bottom of the line Garmin that is uh, basically worthless. Nowadays, if you've ever used a side scan system, eh, there's nothing that compares to it, especially for myself. I like to do a lot of shallow water. Uh, spear fishing where I'm looking for coral heads or just even fishing uh, around places where I'm looking out to the side trying to find things in shallow water. You can't do that with anything else except for a uh, side scan. And once you get used to it, you just love them. So I ended up getting a 7 inch Garmin, put it on there, tried it out one time and it was just a little on the small side. So I opted to go for the 9. The system actually kind of mounts on there pretty nicely. It doesn't fall straight in, but you have to make a very simple bracket. I'll show you how I did that. Also, they typically come with a single side scan transducer, a nice long one that you put on the back. The issue is the back of these jet skis are not made for side scan transducers. There's too much stuff in the way. Plus you have a lot of turbulence from the jet. So there's another modification that I did that costs a little more but it makes a perfect installation. And I believe the Garmin is the only one that has this, and that is a Y cable where you can split two transducers. One shoots to the left and one shoots to the right, and it mixes them together in a unit, and it allows for an incredibly beautiful picture on your side scan unit. I'll go through that process with you also. Let's get started. To get this off, there is one screw underneath, which you can see from down below, and once you take that screw off, you, all you do is just pry these out a little bit, pry the other side out, and then this lifts up. Just lift it up a little bit, and then slide it forward, and this whole thing comes right off. Take a 10 millimeter wrench, and there's a bolt right here. Let's see. There you go. That's off. I'm using an inch and an eighth hole saw. I'm going to drill straight down through where the existing hole is and just open it up. Hopefully I'll be able to drill all the way down and clean all this out without having to individually cut all this. So let's see how it goes. Okay. Got the hole drilled through, nice and big, run all the way down. This isn't really pretty, but it's enough room. I don't know how well that shows up, but you can see there's an opening all the way through here. So the wires now have enough room to come in and go down. And like I said, this will all be covered up, so even though it's rough looking, it'll be beautiful when it's covered up. So the Garmin 943 SXV is just about a half inch too wide to fit in between. So the thickness of this is actually the same as the inside of the bracket. So I've wedged it in there. The little um, ratchet adapters here that need to go down, they're too wide. So I'm going to make a bracket that goes from here up to here and it'll stay wedged in as you can see it's it's in there right now it's wedged in there pretty good the splash panel comes up right to the back so it's good all I need to do is make a bracket that goes from here to here on both sides and that will hold it in place I'm gonna... okay well, take a piece of paper and made my little template it's gonna go from here to here which is the main connecting points and then I've extended it around to the uh, splash cover and it really doesn't even need to be screwed here it just needs to hold on so that this just won't sh lean forward so I'll show you when I get done uh, exactly what I'm talking about but so start here I poked in my hole so that I'm straight I line this up held that steady and then this is going to bend inward so make up the difference of the uh, the length where it bends inward once you got that bend right poke another hole so now you know where your two screw holes are going to be. And then that's your template for cutting the plastic. What I'm using for the 
plastic or um, I think it's made out of PVC. This is a, it's a box that I got at a surplus store. It's probably, oh, I don't know, three-eighths of an inch thick. I don't know if you can get an idea how thick that is. But it's, it's fairly thick, fairly rigid. The reason I chose this is this stuff is very strong. It's like a polycarbonate, but the thing about it being though it's uh, polyvinyl chloride, PVC, you can heat it up very easily and shape it and bend it. Then once it dries, it's very strong. So, um, yeah. Take my template, put it on here, get it lined up to the area that I want to cut, and then just outline it. Okay, we're all set up to use the uh, saber saw point. So I've drilled two holes to start the jigsaw. Let's get the jigging. You know what? It helps to plug it in. All right, let's get jigging. Okay, all done from the grinding wheel, and actually, that yeah, came out pretty good. Okay, the first thing we want to do is get the bottom part bent, this piece here, so it transitions from here to here. There's a drop in of about three-eighths of an inch. Let's get that bend done. Let's get this off. A little more. There you go. This down, push it in right where you want it, and then hold it until it hardens. And just so you know, I've laid the heat gun down on, I turned it to air only, and then immediately laid it down on a towel so that it's cooling itself down and it's not touching anything but a towel. Okay, so I've got it bent in. The holes look like they're lined up. Can you see that? Let's see here in the light. I've got that bend in it. And you can see it's in fact, being really stiff again. Now I want to curve this top part around the back of the splash guard to hold the unit from tilting forward. That's all it's going to do. This isn't any strength here. This is the strength part from here to here. This is just to keep the um, unit from tilting forward. So all it needs to do is have a little curve in this here wrapped around the splash guard. extra so they'll have some tension on it hmm. all right that's really good and it hardened right away it's stiff as a rock again Let's see is that what I'm looking for oh man I think that's exactly what I'm looking for yeah all right there's the uh, bracket. That's all there is to it. Let's put some screws in right now. Okay, now I've got some temporary screws in there and washers on the outside to make it a little stronger. Um, I'm probably not going to leave. I do want washers on the outside just for strength. These are stainless steel, 316 stainless, but I don't like the looks of the stainless washers on the black, so what I'll probably do is use these, but I'll probably use some black epoxy paint on it. I'll Here's how you remove the rear um, extension off the C-Pro. I have, you peel this back here, 
this actually peels back pretty easily. Now, this is pretty new. So one, two, three, actually there's five, four, and there's a fifth one down here, right here. I'm just taking this one out here. Okay, let me stop right here. What just happened was the glued nuts that are on the inside broke free. Couldn't even reach it to fix it. It was a real pain in the butt. I had to manufacture a pole that held the nut back in place way back in there on top of the, the exhaust muffler. And if you have, this happens to you, the only thing you can use that really works good is this two-part epoxy called Flex Set. It's amazing. It will stick to anything. And then there are also one, two, three bolts on each side. And then there are several across the back. All right. And then underneath, you've got four right above the jet. And then one on either side. Take all those out. So there's six there. And then there's actually a pivot point. I don't know if you can see this or not. There's a, right beside your drain plug, there's a bolt. It stays, leave that bolt in, it'll pivot on that. So you'll be able to lean it out of the way without taking the whole thing off. And once you tilt this down, this lifts out fairly easy. There we go. Now this is out of the way. Now you've got plenty of room to work with the wires. I made a little notch right here, which from the other side, it's right there, so the wire can run up through. And then I drilled a hole in the back of the boat above the water line. And when I get done, this will be filled in completely with 5200, which will make this entirely waterproof and it'll be uh, perfect. And then I also have my other port side wire that runs across. And the same thing, a little notch over here too. And then when this gets done, it lifts up against the, the boat like that. Made my own mounts for the transducers. Just took a piece of wood, cut it the size that I needed, um, made use of as much space as I could. This is the part that mounts on the back of the boat. And this comes down a little bit so that it fits over the um, trim tab. And then the transducer mounts right on this. This is hard oak. Uh, take that back, it's hard pine. And then I coated it with this fiberglass resin, Marine Tex epoxy resin, completely encapsulated in it so that it's entirely waterproof. Um, this is going to mount right here like so. And be right even with the side of this mount right here. And then the transducer will mount on this. Uh, will mount right here. And it'll be just below the trim tab. So it'll be a perfect location for it. Now I've mounted them with the uh, wood against the hull. All I used was that same flex set, sanded the fiberglass just a little bit to give it a rough surface, and I've, um, it'll, it'll stick incredibly strong. You can see they're just barely below the uh, trim tabs. You don't want them anymore below that, just barely below it, as the water actually skews upward when you're driving. Inside, I took and wrapped uh, tie wraps, came through the hole, mounted these little plastic cleats that you can buy from West Marine, Again, use flex set, and then tie wrapped all the wires up tight against the cleats, ran them to the front. To get the wires through, a lot of people are taking the insides apart. You don't need to do that. Take this top cover off, which is just in front of your gauges. It's two screws, and once you get those two screws out, the cover just lifts up and pulls off. And then to get the large cover off on the front, you unscrew the two screws inside the cover, one on each side. Oops, and don't drop it like I did. <laughs> 
and it comes right off. Nice. All I did to get wires from the front into the hull was once you take this front piece off, there are two tubes here, basically your air intakes. So these ducts go down into the, um, the hull. You can see there, I don't know if you, how well you can see that, but there's a round one there and there's a round one right beside it. And what I did is I took a piece of antenna lead, antenna coax, and I just shoved it down in there, just shoved it and shoved it, and I heard it flopping around inside. And then when I went into the hull, I looked up in there and I noticed it was, uh, need some light in there. Went into the hull, and I noticed I could see it laying down on the floor, so it's only a short hop. And uh, there it is, coming out this side. So then to get a wire through, all I did was tape on the wire that I want to pull through, and went back to the front and just started pulling it through. Okay, let me explain something here. These two intake ducts don't go straight into the hull. They crisscross each other when they go underneath your storage bin. So when you shove something into the right-hand side, it's going to show up on the left-hand side behind your storage bin near the front of the engine. And vice versa, if you shove something into the left-hand side, it's going to end up showing up on the right-hand side. Don't let that bite you like it did me. I was going crazy for a while. Also, you that um, hose you see up there, that is what I'm using on the opposite side as a pull. I had two pieces. I had a piece of wire, like round white wire, and I had a hose. Both of them are just uh, trace pullers. The Y cable I used is this one right here. Just do a quick search for Garmin Y cable and you'll come right to this page here. Three things to note. First off, they come in a 30 foot and a 10 foot length. So you have to make sure it's the part number dash 10 so you don't end up with a 30 foot cable. The uh, next thing is read the paperwork clearly to make sure that the units you have or the one you're going to get is compatible with dual transducers. Also, there's a list on there of what transducers are compatible with doing a split like this. Not all of them are. So make sure you read it carefully. Now the power I used for this new Garmin was the same power point that came from the front of this thing here. So when you pull this hood off, if you follow the wire that fed the previous Garmin, it comes right to a little connector here. All I did was just cut that off, resoldered the new one on because you can't use the same old connector on these newer units. In there, right beside it, there's a little plug-in fuse. So all I did was I matched the fuse that was required for the new unit into this here. So I think I had to up it by like one amp or something like that. So that's where I pulled power for this. Uh, if you like, you have the option of running it to your battery or to an optional battery so you can keep this thing running. Uh, for me, I don't have to sit still with the engine off using the uh, side scan unit. I basically find the, the coral head that I'm going to be fishing on, shut the unit down, so this being on ignition was perfect for me. The biggest hint I can give you, please, this is the thing I've learned over the years of having dozens of boats and lots of problems with electrical. Do yourself a favor. Get yourself a tube of this. This is Anchor Silicone Grease. Use it liberally on everything that has electrical connection. The more of this grease you put inside, the better you're going to be. These, these connectors that go into the back of the Garmin unit, there is so much of this grease in here that water was never going to get in there. I just completely gooped it in here on all three of the connectors. So use lots of this. Okay, let's take a look. Now, what you want to do is you want to pull your key off, press the button in, that turns your power on, and then once the power is on, you can put your key back on, and that keeps the power on without starting the engine. Then once you go to your Garmin unit, you want to go ahead and bring up your side scan. Click on the side scan, select menu, 
select side, uh, let's see here, side view setup, installation, transducers, and make sure that your proper one is selected. This one here is the GT54 UHD. And then you can go to Diagnostics and it'll show you there's actually two of them listed. So there's one on the port, one on the starboard. Actually even says port and starboard for you here. That way you know they're both hooked up. And then make sure that you select, let's see where it's at here, frequency, and make sure you select the 1120, chirp 1120, and then you'll be all set up for the highest resolution HD side scan. See how beautiful that thing looks? It's got an amazing high resolution screen on it. I love this 9 inch.